Lost Caverns of Ixalan looks absolutely stacked. It's just a standard set, but it's got Mana Crypt in it. And it also has Jurassic Park cards. And there's also some Neon Ink cards. Who knows? We're going crazy over here. On the last stream, I broke it all down with chat and we talked about every card that's been revealed so far, whether it's a good or playable or not card as well. In addition to where some of the values of some of these reprints might fall. If you would, do me a favor, click that subscribe button if you like the video at all by the end of it. That puts you into the 30% of people who subscribe when they watch our videos. If you're in the 70%, no worries. Sit back, grab a beer. Let me thank the patrons for just a second, and then we'll be back with the Ixalan discussion. highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Previews for this begin on October 24th, but Vegas Con, Magic Con, Magic Con Vegas, there was a preview panel and they brought us a lot of spicy details about this set. And when I say a lot, I'm talking about, let me check my notes. One, two, three new frames. The return of flip lands. Four new frames. Sorry, I was incorrect. Sets within the sets permanently forever, starting with this set. Jurassic Park IP crossover slots. Four new commander decks. This set is going to be ridiculous, all right? It's gonna be, it's, and I think it's gonna do a lot for booster fun. I think it's gonna do a lot for all the treatments that you're gonna see. I think we're about to see another set, kind of like uh, the first Eldrain set, Throne, that sets the tone for collector sets for quite some time. So let's jump into this. We're gonna start with this set has box toppers y'all every single box type draft set and collectors are gonna have box toppers we've seen one so far it's coercive portal 14 dollars artifact it's cool because it hasn't been reprinted since conspiracy i mean you can see right there this was a mtgo set not in paper as you can see, only available for ticks, but it was only ever printed in Conspiracy at Mythic. So they're keeping it at Mythic as the box topper, even though rarity there is kind of like, okay, whatever. There's because of what they announced in tandem with this set, there's no way that they could have shown us a single box topper that we cared about any more than what they showed at the end of this reveal. But it's worth noting that in another set this year, they're using a box topper slot to provide further reprints, further variants. We saw some new Ixalan cards that I want to go through pretty quickly here. Rare Breaches returning. Eager Pillager this time, a red and two. First Striking Goblin Pirate for 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a pirate you control attacks, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. So up to three pirates attacking. And you're doing all three of these. Your fourth pirate, you're going to lose value on breaches. But if you're attacking with four pirates, life is probably good. Those first three, though, you're going to trigger. Create a treasure token, target creature can't block, and exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn. Pirate creature type decks? Absolutely. Will there be a pirate standard deck? This line here, target creature can't block this turn? That could be huge. That could be a huge thing for a standard deck. These three mana spells that can come in, surprise people, sorry your thing can't block. First strike built in, I like it. That'd be pretty sweet. And we are, we do know there are four commander decks coming with this set. Merfolk, Vampire, Dinosaurs, and Pirates. So Breaches is gonna be a great card in there. Oger Axonel, this is kind of an interesting one. It's a creature that transforms into a land. 4-4 four, four for four trampling. If a red source you control would deal an amount of non-combat bat damage, less than Ojiraxinel's power to an opponent, that source deals damage equal to its power instead. So your red sources dealing non-combat damage get raised up from one, two, or three to four. 
as long as Axanil's on the battlefield. Mono Red getting some love recently, and they like to give Mono Red love at this mana cost. They're like, this will be a finisher for Red. I mean, guys that magic, you're 100% right. That's where my head goes is Goblin Bombardment. Impact Tremors. Not that those cards needed help anyway. But suddenly any of your, I'll ping you for one with my red source. Dealing four? Sheesh. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh my God, mana barbs. Wolf Spain just said mana barbs and it stun locked me for a second. Oh my God. I don't want this and mana barbs in the same deck. All right, that's against the limits, everybody. I mean, against the rules, sorry. That's, we're gonna have to limit your, your use of those two cards together, I'm sorry to say it. But around here, those two can't be on the same battlefield at the same time. That's just all we're saying. Then when it dies, you return to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control, and it's the Temple of Power. Taps for a red. You can also pay three, transform it back to Oger Axanil, Sounds like the lead singer of a metal band, right? I'm Oger Axenil. Pay three, transform Temple of Power back to Ojil. Activate only if red sources you control dealt four or more non-combat damage this turn and only at sorcery speed. So Ojil just keeps coming back. Pseudo indestructible. You got to exile Ojil. Pretty good red mythic, right? Pretty good red mythic. I mean, like Jenk said, you pump his power and suddenly it's like ridiculous. We're winning the game. All right, so that brings Oger's power, power up to 10-4. I'm going to put Indestructible on him and cast Mana Barbs. <laughs> I'm going to drop Goblin Bombardment and sack all my tokens and deal uh, 40 damage to you each. I like Oger. The red player in me. The red player in me. Now the green player in me is like Galta's back. And Galt is kind of bonkers. But you have to imagine, I feel like every time a set comes out, I see a card like this that off the rip reads as bonkers. And I feel like, does anybody ever have that? Like you read a card and you're like, oh, it's obviously ridiculous. But it kind of ends up being just like kind of tame, kind of normal. I feel like that happens more often than we talk about where a card that on it reads ridiculous is just kind of like it's fine it's fine didn't win me the game it was fine though galta stampede tyrant three green five 12 12 trampler enters the battlefield put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield etb that's pretty sweet but really if you're doing this you want to do it once right dog you want to do it one time and you want to be holding your entire deck. This is the caveat. I want to play Galta. I want to figure out how to draw my entire deck. <laughs> I want to figure out how to make sure everything's going to have haste. And I want like some sort of backup protection for that. Like if we've got anger in the graveyard, I also want an enchantment that gives everything haste on the battlefield. Fires of Yavimaya. So that they can't remove, remove one or the other in, re in response to us playing Galta and dropping our entire board. Because we have to win right when you do this. You have to win. You are the target. You're dying first. I'm talking commander. You don't want to drop like one or two creatures when you play it. Or you're just going to unnecessarily draw attention to yourself. When all you're going to be left with is a 12-12 with trample and a couple of other things. Ooh, sneak attack in Galta. That's a really good combination. I like that one, Harbinger. That's pretty sweet. But yeah, I have a feeling that Galta is going to end up being a pretty tame card that you see something cool happen with one time. And that's how that'll end up. Got another green legend here, but this one's got a three color identity because of a split mana ability and the back of this flip creature. Watley, Poet of Unity. A green and two other for a 
ETBs, search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. I sleep. I sleep. Wally well, just put it on the battlefield. I paid three. You're a mythic. Be pushed for me. Five mana. Split between white and red and three other. Exiler. Then return her to the battlefield. Transformed under her owner's control. Activate only as a sorcery. Roar of the fifth people. Add a lore counter. Create two, three, three dr green dragon creature tokens. Green dinosaur creature tokens. <clears throat> Roar of the fifth people. Drop your first lore counter. Create two, three, three green dinosaur creature tokens. Drop your second lore counter. Roar of the fifth people gains creatures you control have tap. Add Naya colors. That's pretty sweet. I like that. So we get six power on the battle battlefield and then everything can tap for any of our colors. I like that. That's very sweet. Third lore counter. Search your library for a dinosaur card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand and then shuffle. Man, I wish she got to summon it right onto the battlefield. Beggars can't be choosers. Then dinosaurs you control gain double strike and trample until end of turn. So we need to like, we need to search for a dinosaur in that third phase that we are trying to win the game with. So Roar of the Fifth People goes and gets Galta Stampede Tyrant. You drop all of your creatures that turn because you need to play it that turn because you want to be ready for double strike and trample and win the game next turn. Boom. Uh, her front side is just so rough. Her front side is not that good. What are these? Is this this? Is this this? Oh yeah, dude. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. Do dinosaurs generically look like that sometimes on Ixalan? Or is that legitimately she's surrounded by polyraptors? Because that's pretty sweet. That is... Oh, I see somebody in chat. Evan, I missed that. I like the polyraptors on Watley. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Nice little artistic touch there, Tyler Jacobson. Yeah. Watley, unfortunately, doesn't get a very banger of a card. At least not for Commander. This is fine. So you're spending three plus five, eight. You're getting a basic land into your hand. And then across four turns, you get... I mean, what I will say is I this vert, this, these two pieces, this cascades nicely, right? It, it, it helps itself as you go because you create the mana dorks, you gain the mana dorks, you can cast with the mana dorks, the dinosaur that you go and get. That turn, you drop your whole thing. You hope that you can protect it or something. And then everything gets double strike and trample. Well, dinosaurs you control. It's not even creatures you control. Dinosaur deck loves this. I think it's okay past that, personally. Skull Spore Nexus. Now, let me tell you, and I'm sure you felt the same way. You see, I know we just had Eldraine again, but you see a, a large cost mythic artifact in green that starts with the phrase, this spell costs X less. Suddenly your brain is tingling. I call it hinging out. Suddenly you're hinging out and you haven't even read the rest of the card. Eight mana, Skull Spore Nexus. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So you got a six six power on the battlefield. You got two mana legendary artifact here. That's pretty sweet. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base, power, and toughness, each equal to the total power of those creatures. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, you're gonna add up all of their base power and toughnesses. No, all of their powers. All your creatures that die at once, you add up their powers. 
And then you create a green fungus dino creature token with base power and toughness equal to that total power number. Then just for S and G's, you can pay to tap it and double target creatures power until in a turn. Man, I wish it said trample anywhere on this card. Pick a spot and just throw the word trample on there for me. I wanted to say that so much that I would guess that it did say that at some point and it was too much. They needed a balance to this card to be that you can chump the fungus dino, even though it's like a 2020 <laughs> or worse. No, Buzz, it can't. Okay, got it. The first sentence is not where you can put the word trample. It does not make this spell any better if it says the cost less for each creature you control with trample. That would make this worse. I will, I, I will concede that. But I still think this is super, super busted in a power deck because it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be way cheaper. On average, you're probably going to cast this for what? Five? Four or five is probably what you would normally cast this for across the board. There's going to be the times where it's easily three or two. And if your commander has trample, it's commander, color, green, sort, EDH rec, power. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Power greater than or equal to six and it says trample on the card somewhere we got it chat we found it here is the best creatures to possibly run the thing that makes fungus dinosaurs all of these commanders look at that card and go yes please i will take it All of these make that artifact two or less. So if you've seen your commander here on the board, that means that you're tonight's big winner. Come on down. You're going to get to run the Skull Spore Nexus in your deck. Ba -da 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 -da. Let's journey on to Kellen daring traveler now i just really loved that transition so i had to do it but skull spore nexus you saw it it's gonna i mean the double power to, double power until end of turn that's gonna win some games beggars can't be choosers on the trample thing and built-in protection against board wipe in a deck that's running creature like in a deck that would want this built-in board wipe protection chef's kiss Let's journey on. Kellen, Daring Traveler. This card looks a lot like a constructed card to me, just kind of glancing at it. There's a lot of text. The power and toughness are high for what the mana cost is, but most of this is irrelevant to Commander. But this is... Let's see. One white, one other for a 2-3 human fairy scout. Three different creature types there. That's nice. Whenever Kellen Daring Traveler attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card with mana value three or less, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you can put it into your graveyard. There you go. This has standard white aggro deck written all over it, and we haven't even looked at the sorcery. I don't think that's good enough to go extended formats. Because it's not pulling them onto the battlefield. It's an attack and it's an attack trigger. But it really will have to do with the adventure side of this. Journey on. Create X map tokens where X is one plus the number of opponents who control an artifact. So we don't know what this means yet. We have not been given all we've been do done. All that's been done. All, the, 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 all that's been done is map tokens have been teased. 
Anybody heard like a really dope guess for what map tokens are? We know explore is going to be back back in the set. They said something about explore, right? So create X map tokens. X is one plus the number of op opponents who control an artifact. So you're going to guarantee yourself one and constructed maybe two. Yeah, Dan, that's what I'm thinking. Something like pay a cost and they've balanced it at one, two or three. Explore. And that makes the Kellen side better. You know, it'd be really sweet if it gave like basic or non-basic land walk for a turn, but it all, that seems way too broken. But imagine like if you're looking at this as a two part card and they're trying to really tease what map tokens are, Kellen is an attack trigger. And so you're throwing your creature into danger to achieve its goal. It's going to go on a journey with its map token that it creates on turn one, turn two, you drop Kellen turn three, pay three tap sacrifice map. Kellen gains non-basic land walk. Let's even build because it's kind of broken. Let's build in an extra caveat that you got to jump through here to pull this off. That'd be pretty sweet, in my opinion. Gonna be boring if it's just like something for lands. If we're gonna keep making these different types of tokens, let's keep innovating. Let's keep making them, making them sweet, making them flavorful. So TBD on Kellen, probably a constructed card. And then what can we say about this card that we haven't said? This is one of the few cards that isn't a commander that Jake and I have made a dedicated video on, on this channel, just discussing this land and all of the different conversation that you gotta have surrounding this land. Look at all these prints of this land now. I would have to go back and see the exact date that we released the Cavern of Souls video. But it would have had to have been around... Was that Double Masters or Double Masters 22? It was 22. There you go. So Double Masters 22. Somewhere around there. We released a video talking about how this card was going to be one of the mythic land market indicators for magic the gathering and they were going to they were just going to keep it around 50. they were always going to keep it around 50 or 60 dollars it's crazy looking at this you've got og printing avison restored you've got modern masters 2017 then ultimate masters and a box topper back when box toppers Back like before box toppers got renamed to extended. Then you've got your Zendikar rising expedition, your list copy, not reprinted again until double masters 22 in which we get three versions base etched. And what this was probably showcase or extended. I don't know what they called this one showcase. I think borderless borderless. There we go. Got there. Electronic version. Middle earth, middle earth, middle earth three new versions Gar granted one of them this is not really a three version reprint right this didn't really do much to the price of the whole card it's bumping our base copies down to like the 40s range-ish but this one wasn't a huge one but now it's gonna be in a standard set like, I need everybody to realize this is a standard set reprinting of this. Cavern of Souls here is not only being reprinted as some special version, some box topper, guest star, whatever the hell they want to call all their different sets within sets now. This is just going to be in the set printed at Mythic. And on top of that, we're also getting... Let's get out of the Cavern of Souls. We're also getting 
the Mesoamerican inspired art version, which we'll get to with Exelon. And then we're also getting the ink versions. I'm telling y'all, I was not exaggerating when I said, I think that this set, I'm pretty sure this set is gonna change things. And if it did, if it maybe change things is the wrong phrase. It's, it's more like it's gonna set the tone. So really quickly with Ixalan, we're looking at Ixalan a year after March of the Machine. So this is a whole plane that's been affected by the March of the Machine. You got this new faction that they're trying to get to in the middle of the planet, middle of the world, at the core. Some kind of new sun. They might be hinting at... <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think they might make jokes about there being a sixth color of magic. That'd be pretty crazy. You know it's going to happen one day. <laughs> We've seen these flip cards. We got flip lands yet again, just like we did the first time around. So far, we've seen them on two legendary creatures. We got new full art basics. And I think that that's a good time to get a new poll going here. I need to know if y'all like these full art basic lands more than the ones that we just typically get because we get these for every set now it's i can't ask the question do you care about full art basics anymore because the answer is widely going to be no what i want to know is do these are these attractive to you more than any of the ones that we've seen from this year harbinger says with six new versions will cavern hit 25 dollars i it's re it's really difficult to say with this one jake and i are gonna have to dig into this one and we'll probably do another whole video just about cavern of souls or at least about all these different uh variants and the inks and all this there's just a lot to break down with this set they're going hard i'll tell you for a regular set for a regular standard set release they are going hard here at the end of the year they're trying to make their numbers in Q1, they want to look at Q4 and Q4 be dope. So they're like, uh, second release of our most pop, one of our most popular sets ever. And also Lost Caverns of Ixalan has literally anything you could possibly ask for. Thank you and moving on. Yeah, I mean, if this is appearing, Jank said, are the people are going to want four ofs of this in standard? Yeah, probably. There's going to be, I mean, if they're printing this, there's some creature deck that they want to succeed. Some creature type build that they want to be popular. And so this will be the spiky way to protect it. Also means that there's some kind of dope, probably some kind of dope creature counter spell either here or coming. But being printed in a standard set with two different versions alongside however you can find all of these i know that some of them are going to have like 0.0000001 percent to open but not all of them are some of them are going to be like four percent and that'll be the worst one but that'll be more copies i mean in this 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 version looks cool I think people are going to want this. Yeah, but Shieldren has only ever been printed once. Yes, we got quite a few versions, but... I mean, widely unavailable. Nobody wants it. Widely unavailable. Widely unavailable. Widely unavailable. You got these two. And then the etched. So yeah, T-Wolf. I mean, Shieldred holding... 71 around 70 bucks one printing one set this card set its own price tone cavern is going to have vari variations and is already 50 dollars coming into this I don't think it'll be a $20 land. That's not what I'm saying. I just don't think that... I think this is going to be like 30 to 40 bucks. So the basic lands, 
looking at the poll 56 percent of you say that you like these basics more than recent sets i gotta agree with you on this one i hope i wasn't giving that away i was trying to get y'all's opinion before i told you my opinion on this one but these basic lands are what i want to see out of full art basics in a set because nobody cares anymore nobody gives a crap about full art basic lands anymore these look different make them different you're pushing the boundaries everywhere else literally everywhere else you're pushing the art direction boundaries of what a magic card can be what a magic card can look like there's no better place in my opinion than to do that than with these basic lands make them look nuts make them look crazy that's the slot in these kind of sets i want to look at and say oh that doesn't look like a magic card where's that because they're basics who cares guess what it's good for the economy they're good so i do appreciate this like travel brochure look what do these look like these look like these look like some kind of they look like video game cover art kind of they look like they could be a shot in an in some kind of crazy anime posters postcards yeah yeah dude give us basic lands that are oriented this way so when i tap them i tap them up and down but they say swamp running this direction you know what i'm saying let me sleeve those up i don't care you can't mess with the sanctity of basic lands print whatever on basic lands you want if Mark Rosewater wants to personally write planes on every single planes in the set with a Sharpie, that's actually pretty sweet. Thanks for putting the time in, Mark. But until then, get nuts. We don't care. They're basic lands. Do what you want. Oh, that's my rant on full our basic lands. <laughs> It's just so silly. And these are cool looking, man. And it's like we've pushed the envelope with this. Let's do it. Let's just go. I don't need any more basic lands that look like every other land that has ever been printed. Like there are so many different versions of these now. Like the Eldraine basics, the Eldraine full arts. These look awesome. Who cares? Retro frame. Reusing some Rebecca, some Mark Poole, little Elena Danner. I got these. I got a whole set of these for my Phyrexian themed deck. Still, who cares? Like stuff like this. I think this is special, right? This is like Transformers back there or something. But stuff like this shouldn't be allowed anymore these no yeah this off limits boring off limits robin alasson you did awesome sergey gulashkov sick the pieces are sick this has nothing to do with y'all as artists this has everything to do with the art direction too boring too boring don't need them not hyped go crazy cooler honestly cooler this is better as a land <laughs> than this boring cooler not even lands <laughs> okay these kind of these kind of are dope but they're better they're different art right let's see what else one more example no nope. boring 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 sweet this is good this this is another this is another perfect example of what i'm talking about shout out friend of the channel ben schnuck still rocks just had to say something this is what i'm talking about right here make them look tight and i know as the <laughs> the art director for this set is looking at me going you have no clue what you're talking about i'll admit that i don't do the job but what i'm saying is you've given examples of the job being done very well do that 
All right, done. Done talking about basic lands. We're moving on. New frame alert. Let me pull up my notes here. New frame alert. Legends of Ixalan frame. What are your thoughts and prayers about the Legends of Ixalan frame? This one to me is not what I expected because we all expected this, something like this, right? Because we've seen this as like the Ixalan frame, but there's actually a different, there's a variant of a variant. The Legends of Ixalan frame. Yes, I'm getting that right. I think this is kind of cooler. I didn't mind the uh, the coin, the coin look from Multiverse Legends here, but this looks way closer to this. No, sorry, to this than it does to this. And I dig. I I mean, I dig. It's just another. It's another piece with the creature, right? We get it in color. We can see detail you know again i like the i like this version i got this version i bought a version of this in rainbow foil for my commander deck and it looks sweet the coin really cool look but i don't mind this i think it's pretty sweet evokes the theme of the plane really well the visual themes of the plane, I mean. Gives us another version of a creature for your deck or a commander for you. I'm excited to see more of these, especially if the art is in is kind of stylized like this. This look like looks like it could have been, you know, like hand drawn on the map. So that frame is cool. New frame alert! This one's called the Ixalan God Frame. This is the Ixalan God Frame version of the Ixalan God, Osier Axonil. I am butchering the pronunciation. But here you've got something a little more impressionistic. It's a little different take. We saw Osier. Y'all know what Osier looks like. So the head is the head is a yes. Dinosaur arm, crazy flaming axe, or sword, or sword axe, and a scary head thing with lots of things. Like this is just a big hairy, scary hairy head situation up there. So here we see the scary hairy head situation. But it's more in that. Captain Lannery Storm Ixalan Showcase Multiversal Legends. Right? Look at the... Now close your eyes and I'll hit back. There you go. Right? Pretty good. Pretty close. But then on the back, we've got just like the basic... The land frame that we've seen. It's not... We don't get a new version of the frame for the lands. I think it's a little bit different, probably. Um search for Azkanta. I was going to look. Let's compare this one to the old one and see what it looks like. So basics. And this is the other side. Yeah, it's very close. It's very close. Yeah, look at that. Very close. It's nearly identical. This is just happens to be a blue card. This happens to be a red card. So that doesn't change. But this is more similar to the Multiversal Legends frame. Probably be the kind of one where it's like it's only appearing on a certain number of cards. Certain characters get this one. You know how the show, how the uh, Planeswalker showcase, Planeswalkers used to get some special outside the whole rest of the set treatment. I wonder if that is what's happening here, since we don't have the Planeswalkers anymore to get the like, get the like showcase frames of those. You know what's weird is when I saw this on Captain Lannery. Let's look at the non. Nope, not that one either. Come on, here we go. Just a good PNG version. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what it is that's different because this is kind of same, same. 
and I'm looking at this one and I kind of like it, but I'm looking at this one and I'm kind of like, meh. Maybe this, maybe this. I'm unclear on what I'm looking at, I think. Like, is this all supposed to be some sort of legendary tablet engraved in the side of a tomb that we're looking at here? Because the other one I can parse it. It's a giant medallion that's been like cast into mem to memorialize a legendary creature. But is this like a, am I looking at something that was made to like honor this God? I don't know. Yeah, I know that that's a God, Naomi. I know I'm looking at a God. I get that. <laughs> I just don't know. Is it the, like, is this Oger? Is Oger like, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. I don't know. It's a new frame. I don't think we end up seeing this frame a lot. I think we end up seeing a lot more of this frame. I'll have to look that up to see exactly how much these are appearing. But between that frame, that frame, we've got, we know we've got borderless. Borderless is just a thing. It's going to happen. Actually, I actually like this art on here too. It's kind of a nice minimalist take not an art critic so i don't know what to call it but i know that i like it almost looks like watercolor a little bit but i don't think it is maybe there's some in there do we need to talk about galta's teeny weeny arms because the teeny weeny arms are what make galta galta and we wouldn't have it any other way new frame alert new treatment alert you thought we had talked about the last treatment in this set. This isn't even the last one. Buckle in. What is this one called? Ultec Showcase Frame. So the Ultecs, the Ultecs are that new faction that we haven't seen on that are descendants of the Sun Empire, which are the people and dinosaur faction. The Oltecs are the new faction in the middle of the plane that are after the new, the new uh, magical resource called Cosmium. Cosmium gives off Unobtainium vibes. You remember when Unobtainium was in, uh, what was that Blue People movie? Unobtainium, very close to Cosmium. Same vibes, same thing. Avatar, yes, Ari, thank you. Yes, dude. Unobtainium. Cosmium has unobtainium, <laughs> unobtainium vibes. It's like every every fictional game world needs some unique metal or element that they farm. On the channel, ours would be called Jake and Jolium. So make sure that you're upgrading your warehousing so that you can store enough Jake and Jolium to make it between streams. We don't want anybody to run out of Jake and Jolium. Anyway, this is called the Oltec Showcase Frame. And it's got Mesoamerican style art. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty neat. I think it's pretty neat. Also in that Oltec Showcase Frame, we've got it. We've got the Cavern of Souls. Again, this looks cool. I think it's pretty sweet. Yes, Jold Lotuses are made from Jake and Jolium. <laughs> That's absolutely right. We'll come back to this. I want to talk about these next. So we've got another slot. And this is what I was talking about, I think is going to change Magic the Gathering. Or not change the Magic the Gathering, but it's going to set a new tone for collector products going on. <laughs> and it's called Special guests you can see it up there in the top right you can see it on the card look down there at the collector number lci special guest this is a new slot it's a new slot i'm looking at my notes on this one so i don't get this wrong it's a new slot in all set and collector boosters i think we are done with like masterpieces we're done with enchanting tales we're done with i think we'll we may still have some where they name it but this is going to become the go-to here it's called special guests 
and this is how it was described by wizards this is this is a quote these are powerful master's release level reprints featuring art in the aesthetic of the set powerful master's release level reprints featuring art in the aesthetic of the set that's a quote also quoted confirmed to be in every set going forward so every set is going to have the special guest slot so will these replace things like enchanting tales will they just supplement things like enchanting tales who knows the reprints are coming we thought that this has been a big year for reprints i don't think we've seen anything yet because now we've got the special guest slot which in this set so far features lord of atlantis kick-ass merfolk card oh and also a little card called mana crypt jake and i were like and by the way this art oh my god dude yes this art makes me happy so this special guest slot confirmed to be in every set going forward is what they're saying but we know how that works with wizards what that means is until we want to change it again which is fine that's how they do things i think that this is going to have some ripple outward effects i think that the this is a way for them to say look if you buy a set booster of this product you could get an x in this set a mana crypt for this set anybody who buys a set booster has some chance of pulling a mana crypt and this is a standard set that's just nuts to me that is nuts to me jake and i are going to break this this topic in particular down at length on the channel i bet so so crazy to me so let's talk about the other piece that's on everybody's mind you can see it right here mana crypt and cavern of souls getting what they're calling cosmium neon ink variants cosmium neon ink so no we are not getting serialized cards in ixalan caverns you sure about that are you sure about that are you sure about that one two three four five six versions with cascading rarities so we're not we're not gonna get serialized cards but well and this is on a playable card y'all neon ink hit at sugu that card is the card is fine I was going to say that card is awful, but it's fine. It's a fine card. This is Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt. Cosmium Neon Ink versions. The sky is the actual limit. On these prices. <laughs> I don't want you to get FOMO, but everybody panic. Everybody freak out. And the thing is, yeah, Nicholas, I'm seeing purple. I want the purple. The blue in is straight gas. That's the thing. All of these look sick. Not only is it one of the most playable cards in all of existence. <laughs> so playable that they took it. And they were like, oh, we literally can't have you play this in Legacy. It can also not be played in Oathbreaker. So we learned something new about Oathbreaker today together. Don't say we don't teach you shit on this stream. But a wildly playable card is now getting neon ink treatments to make it rarer and rarer and rarer 
this is a weird one because it's like yellow blue purple red green and i'm sort of all of them i'm kind of all of my friends colors and then this one's just like oh, i can't stand that guy this is just the normal one it's like everybody i was the og i don't care what other i don't care what lasers they wear i'm the original do you sell if you pull it right away yes or yes well here's the thing these kind of go counter counter intuitively to the whole position that jake and i take on cards like this because these rarest ones will be legitimately rare let's take a look at hitetsugu's one year chart well there you go never mind <laughs> everything is crashing it's all coming down everyone panic the sky is falling so I would say the best time to have sold your neon ink hit at Sugu would have been in October of 22 and your second best time is right now <laughs> I'm just kidding that's not financial advice do whatever the hell you want with your neon red hit at Sugu devouring chaos all I'm saying is the green one is now 80 bucks look at this chart oh my god and you know what now that neon ink is not special anymore that's why that's why your yellow one's here yeah no worries food i appreciate you being in these it's not special anymore when did we see an announcement for neon ink when was the first time we knew that neon ink was going to be a thing is that this weekend did we find that out this weekend Yeah, Spectre, there is a huge difference between this card and this card. Don't get me wrong. The difference between Mana Crypt and Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos is the maximum amount of distance that you can get between two magic cards almost. It's pretty damn near. The width, as wide as like, look, I'm trying to reach, reach wider. That's how far it is they are away in playability. okay so this was already crashing so this is just a this is just crashing just because magic is kind of going in a southward direction right now because most everything related to money is going in a southward direction so i mean comparing the prices this is bleak on the neon ink hit its sugu devouring chaos side but mana crypt is super playable so it's it, i mean I think sort of my blanket, not financial advice is always selling to the hype. If you pull one of these cards and somebody wants to buy it for a thousand dollars, just be like, thanks for the free thousand universe and walk away with your thousand dollars. Pay your rent. But if you've got a mono red mana crit man, uh, if you've got a mono red like the C the Godo CEDH decks, they gonna want this version. Hopefully it's not the most expensive for you. Sorry. We've also got Cavern of Souls coming in hot. You know what's cooler than one neon ink treatment in a in a set? Two neon ink treatments, baby! We already turned the neon ink printer on. We might as well do a second card. So you've also got Cavernous Souls happening. And so... See, I mean, Jank, this is why to me, the discussion of, well, you're going to need four of it. Well, you're not going to need four of it for every deck. This isn't a shock land, right? You're only going to need a four of it in those decks and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different copies. And looking at this, these came in a lot of different rarities, as you can tell. The WPN exclusive one is only a $25 card. Again, 
the difference between playability in between Cavern of Souls and Neon Ink Hidetsugu also large, very large. So it'll be interesting to see what Cavern of Souls does here because this card that we thought just had so much reprint equity saved up gonna always be a $50 card. When it gets back up to 80, they're gonna tamp it back down to 50. Since we made that video in paper, even with super rare versions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 more copies. 11 more variations of this have been released out into the wild or will be, will have been. I don't think Cavern's going to five bucks, Poison Sugar. I don't think it's dry. I don't think I'm that catastrophist on it, but if catastrophist is a word, I know it ain't going to five dollars. You thought I was done, didn't you? No, 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 no. We talked about treasure trove box toppers. Yeah, that was where we started. So we got box toppers. We got full art basics. We got Ixalan legends frame. We got Ixalan gods frame. You know, we got the border list coming, coming through. We got Mesoamerican Otec frame. We got Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls, Cavernous Souls coming at you. We got special guest slots in. We've got special. Sorry, I had to take a moment. We got special guest slots that are going to be in every set going forward. Every single set they say are going to have powerful master's release level reprints featuring art and the aesthetic of the set. Then we're not done. The easiest way to say this is you remember Transformers in Brothers War? That but Jurassic Park. There you go. Some will be good, some will be bad, some will be expensive, some will be jank. Within the Caverns of Ixalan, available in set and collector boosters, they are printing the Jurassic Park set, of which so far we've seen these three cards. Indominus Rex Alpha from the new Jurassic Park set within a set, much like Transformers in Brothers War. Green, green, and then two hybrid mana, black, blue, black, blue, and then one. So five mana total for a 6-6 six, six Dinosaur Mutant. As it enters the battlefield, discard any number of creature cards. It enters with a flying counter on it. If a card discarded this way has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Haste, Indestructible, Life Link, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. It enters the battlefield. You draw a card for each counter on it. Exile that creature with a blood counter on it and said, Oh, we've already got the deck built, y'all. Rayami decks. This is a Rayami deck here. Got him. Top cards. Reach, Trample, Flying, Death Touch, Pro Multicolor, Lifelink, Haste. Ooh, Lifelink and Haste. Banehound, like, I can serve a purpose. Flying, Death Touch, Lifelink, Flying, Vigi, First Strike, Death Touch. Ooh, any Glissa. Ho, 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 ho. First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof? Is that the best? First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof is pretty brutal. You got to board wipe me. You got to board wipe me, dude, or I'm getting through. Old fogey. Jankos told you had a good idea here. Old fogey. Oh, come on. <laughs> Jank! Jank, you're on restriction. Jank, you're officially on, on, on restriction. Rayami decks, y'all. If you want to build Indominus Rex, go check out 
Rayami decks. I love Death Touch First Strike. Look at this. Does it get Defender? Hopefully not, right? No, it doesn't get Defender. That'd be nuts. Vigi Reach Trample. Vigi Death Touch Haste. Vigi Reach Trample. It seems pretty easily to get easy to give it Vigi Reach and Trample. I like that. Menace. Gotta be there, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So check out Rayami decks for inspiration. Looks like there's some pretty playable cards in there too. We're not running old fogey in the deck. Jank, you are on restriction. So, I mean, y'all look, this seems bonkers. I, this is like super up my alley because it's pretty Voltron-y, it feels. I see this creature and I'm like, oh my God, I wanna build that. But you know what it leads itself to is a reanimator strategy. And all it seems like I can build anymore is reanimator decks. Indominus Rex looks really sick. I want to build a reanimator deck that instead of just reanimating things, also occasionally is like giant dinosaur mutant coming at you. Monster coming at your face. Pretty cool. Then we've also got Ian Malcolm Chaotician, which that's one of the first couple times I've ever said that word. Chaotician. One red, one blue, one other for a legendary human scientist. It's a 2 2. Remember, by the way, these cards are going to be playable in Legacy and Vintage, not just Commander. So let me know if this is playable in Legacy, you think. <laughs> Legendary Human Scientist 2-2 two -two says, whenever a player draws their second card each turn, that player exiles the top card of their library. So uh, that's going to be triggering a lot for a lot of players in a game of Commander. Whenever a player draws their second card each turn, that player exiles the top card of their library. During each player's turn, that player may cast a spell from among the cards they don't own, exiled with Ian Malcolm, Chaotician, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. I'm a hard, I'm a hard, I don't think so on this. That sucks. I was really looking forward to Ian Malcolm's card. But I wanted it to be, I mean, do I need to Google sexy Ian Malcolm here live on stream? And just, we kind of bask in it for a second. Number one, this was the only choice for the art of an Ian Malcolm card. You're fooling yourself going with any other shot from that movie. Number two, chaos magic, seriously? You can play spells from the top of my deck. It sounds so fun. No, it doesn't. I played one time against an all chaos deck. There wasn't even a win con in it during the like fifth or sixth game reset. We just stopped playing. It was just, we were done with it. I can't, I won't please leave me alone. That's my official review of Ian Malcolm chaotician moving on. Welcome to Ooh, I bet I know what the back of this says. Green, green one. It's a saga. 
For each opponent, up to one target non-creature artifact they control becomes a 0-4 wall artifact creature with defender for as long as you control this saga. Up to one target non-creature artifact, your soul ring, sorry about it, becomes a 0-4 wall artifact creature with defender for as long as we control the saga. So we turn it down. Create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. It gains haste until end of turn. But we can't attack with it because there's walls on the battlefield unless we've done something about the walls. But then you destroy all the walls. Exile welcome to and then return it to Jurassic Park, baby. That's going to be fun to say when you cast this card, right? Jurassic Park is a legendary land that transforms from Welcome to. It says each dinosaur card in your graveyard has escape. <laughs> That's so funny. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. And then you can Jurassic Park is a Gaia's cradle for dinosaurs. So dinosaur decks are going to want this freaking card like holy crap. This is like Growing Rights of Itlamok or Guy's Cradle for, Jur for Jurassic Park decks. I love the flavor of this card. The flavor of this is excelente. Escape cost. The walls come down. We've got the shot of the flare scene from the movie. Little insulted that T-Rex from Jurassic 1 is a 3-3 with trample. That was not a 3-3. You're fooling yourself if you thought that was anything less than a 4-4. Min. 4-4 Min. But, I mean, if you look at it, Indominus Rex, this one was, I don't know if y'all follow the lore of Jurassic Park, but this thing was kind of a, it's a bullshit dinosaur, honestly. They were just like, this one combines the T-Rex, and it combines the Velociraptor, and we just took all the good ones, all the good pieces from all the other dinosaurs, but mostly Velociraptors and... T-Rexes, you know, we're trying to sell this thing. And then we made this. And it's a bigger, badder dinosaur. But I grew up with this T-Rex being the villain slash hero of that movie. Saving them from the Velociraptors at the end with the banner. Y'all know that shot. The banner does this. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, too. Y'all can picture it right now. And there's no other way I could have described it better than this right here. That banner does this around that T-Rex. And then they escape. And he says, I regret to inform you, I won't be investing in your park. Best line in the movie. Pretty good saga. I'm excited to see what the rest of these are. Ian Malcolm, get out of here. Indominus Rex sexy sexy baby excellent ready ready for a commander deck welcome to jurassic park pretty sweet the flavor is off the charts the crazy part of this one is the is the set within a set within a set y'all we've got special guests coming let me know down in the comments if you're watching this after the fact on youtube let's chat it in the comments about all these cards we got ixlon is looking to be a crazy set and hey if you're watching this after the fact you could have been here live with us be live with us next time. 9.30 Eastern, almost every single Wednesday. We're here for Jake and Joel Magic Live.